Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. As with any step in occlusal adjustment, prior to the adjustment in lateral, a careful occlusal analysis should be performed. On this particular set of casts, one side has been fabricated to have a cuspid guidance, the other side has been fabricated to have occlusal interferences that would prohibit a lateral excursion that is what we would like to see in an occlusal analysis and will require adjustment. If we look at the left-hand side of the mounted cast and go into a lateral excursion. This would be the right working, I'm sorry, the left working. We notice that the cuspid, number 11, the left cuspid, does the guiding in this lateral excursion. Now, lateral excursions are adjusted first from centric occlusion and also checked later in centric relation. So at this particular point, the shims are in, and this case is going, starting out from the centric occlusion position. Now, something that you cannot feel through the television is the fact that this is a very smooth and even movement, and uh, there is no tripping or binding in this excursion. So in the working on this side, as we've told you in lecture, one of the acceptable guidances is a cuspid guidance with, a, of course, a very stable cuspid uh, and no balancing interferences on the other side. And this excursion communicates the feeling that there is no balancing contact. If we go to the other side, and we perform the excursion, I'm tilting this up to show the space developed between the teeth, is in this excursion it's more difficult and you can see there's a, there's a clunk you can probably hear uh, as I go into excursion in this direction. And this is due to the fact that there are some interferences present here that will not allow a smooth, even excursion and actually we can see through all of the buccal cusp and the cusp of the cuspid on this side. So that means either there is a contact on the lingual in the working excursion or there is a balancing contact on the other side. As we turn this around from behind, we will see that there is a contact either on the first or second molar on this side in the balancing excursion. And right here on this tip is where I fall over. And there's a clunk right there. And then at this point, you can see that I'm past it. I'm past it on the first molar, but the second molar is still maintaining contact. The two supporting cusps are together. So what we would do is go back and take the articulating paper or articulating ribbon and place it in between the teeth. Go into excursion. Again, this is from the centric occlusion position. The shims are in. Rub it back and forth. Then go on the other side to the balancing. I won't turn it, but I'll put the ribbon on the other side. You can see the ribbon sticking out a little bit there. And do the same excursion and begin by checking the maxillary teeth. Now on this side, the right hand side with the red ribbon, I notice that there is a contact right here on this tip. Now this is a working contact and that's a favorable contact uh, in that it is on the buccal cusp in working. On the opposing side, 
in the area of the molars, we have a balancing area indicated here and here. And these are areas that are obliquely located and they actually follow the oblique ridge and they're the contacts that are producing the balancing interferences on the opposing side. If we go down to the mandible to check where our contacts are, on the molars on this side, we have the corresponding buccal cusp that interferes, and in the oblique direction, it follows the grooves, which are also obliquely directed. We'll notice that we're right into the supporting cusp, and the rule for adjusting balancing is that you don't take it off the lower cusp because undermining that buccal supporting cusp is contraindicated and we'll end up taking it off the maxillary. If we go to the opposing side on the lower, what we will notice is that we have a contact here on this lingual cusp. Now this is a working contact. This is the lingual of the lower and we also have a working contact here. Now, since the working contacts are not out on this side, these are unfavorable working contacts, and they will have to be removed. Now, this is the lingual of the lower portion of the bull rule, which completely is the buckle of the upper and the lingual of the lower. Um, we'll go back to the maxillary cast and remove the areas that we will uh, or that we find necessary to correct. Now, since this is the only cusp tip that is making contact in this lateral excursion, it would be highly unlikely that uh, this tooth would be able to support uh, all of this contact in this excursion. So we will remove the buckle of the upper and we will gradually take some of this ridge down to decrease the amount of contact of this tooth in working excursion. On the other side, in the molar area, is where we would reduce the balancing we would take it off the upper because this cusp is larger and is more easily contoured. The actual area of the support probably is in the area of this cusp tip. In this area, this pronounced oblique ridge would probably not affect the centric contacts of this tooth. So in the oblique direction, not completely obliterating the cusp, but going in the direction of the mark, we will reduce some of this guidance. Now on the mandible, we don't have anything to remove on the lower, in the molar area here, because we said this is an area that we do not grind. Here we have the other aspect of the bull rule. We will take something off the lingual of the lower, again in the same direction as the mark. There's no point in just going in there and haphazardly cutting this off. One should know the exact direction that the mark is traveling and reduce it in that particular direction to assure that the contacts will clear each other with a minimal amount of reduction. We will again take the area and mark it, putting the ribbon in on the right hand side going into the working excursion. And then putting it on the left-hand side, again repeating the working excursion because we want to duplicate the balance on this side. Now I'm starting to get a feeling that it is much more smooth than it was before. Going back and checking the, the maxillary areas, we see that up here, we have a slight increase. There's a contact right here in this particular area. And the first molar is free from contact and balancing at this particular time, except for a little area right in here. Now, this is what we'll remove next. We'll take a slight amount of this off. That should fulfill our requirements of no balancing. And we'll take this off the first molar. That should take care of that. If we go over to the other side in the maxillary arch, 
we find that we have a little contact here. And I don't see any other contact on the upper going to the lower. There is again a slight contact down here. So we will remove that contact slightly on the upper. And just a touch down here on the lower to get that last little area there. Now I'm going to change the color of the ribbon here and go to the black to check this out. I'm having some difficulty seeing the red on the upper teeth. Now, if we look up at the maxillary again, now we see that we do have some contact here on this cuspid. We do have some contact here on this first by. We do have some contact here on the second by. And we do have some contact here on the first molar. Now, this would not be called a group function because group function would be from the say, central incisor all the way around. This would be a multiple contact guidance in the working excursion, which is also perfectly acceptable because the load is shared. Now, if we close the articulated together and look at it again from the side here and go into the excursions, you'll notice now that there is a contact between the buccal cusp on the right-hand side, on the cuspid, first by, second by, and on a little bit of the first molar. And this is a perfectly acceptable relationship in the working excursion. This is a smooth area right out here. Now we're adjusted out cuspid tip to tip. If I go beyond the cuspid tip to tip, I'm contacting on the other side. So we're only adjusting out cuspid tip to tip. There is no point in going beyond that because you cannot adjust that out anyway without any contact on the working side. The balancing will always be in contact. Now if we come in on this balancing side again and take a look at that, we can go out to point cuspid tip to tip and there is a space between these teeth. Now very far out here we still have an area of the second molar that appears to be in heavy contact. Now that could be adjusted if you were very particular about the area. I'll put the tape in on this side and attempt to double check that. Coming around here now the area of course that we would be grinding would be on the the buccal, I'm sorry, the lingual cusp of this maxillary area. And we can see right here that there is a mark indeed right toward this tip. It's actually right in this particular spot here. I'll mark it with the pen to bring it out a little bit more. It's right in that particular area and you see it's just a little bit further of the excursion that we were following before and just a little reduction in that area. Now, if we turn this just slightly around on this side, staying on that same tooth, we'll remember that over here we have a contact on the um, on this part of the lingual cusp, and this is a centric contact, and so the small alteration that occurred here on the buckle will not affect this lingual cusp, and it'll still maintain a stable centric contact. We also have a stable centric contact here on these lingual cusps, up on the opposing side, these lingual cusps here are also making stable centric contacts. If we go down and check the, the mandible again, on this side we still have the remnants of the initial balancing contacts here, but nothing was removed. Uh, one of the ways that um, I look at the lateral excursion adjustment is to make sure that there isn't a undue removal of the orange paint from these buccal cusps on the lower which would mean that you have been doing uh, unnecessary grinding down on the lower. On this side, we'll notice that we have paint removed on the 
lingual aspect, I'm sorry, in the buccal aspect of the lingual cusp of the lower teeth. And this is both for adjusting the centric as well as the working adjustment. Um, so this is an area that may be ground for lateral excursion. On the buccal aspect, there is no removal on the working or the balancing side on this right-hand side. At this stage, one has from centric occlusion a smooth lateral excursion to the right and to the left with no balancing interferences present. If the shims are taken away and out of the area, now the cast can go forward into the centric relation. Again, you can see the freedom and centric present. One would also have to check to make sure that in this forward position in centric relation, that is the forward position of the maxillary cast, that in this excursion, again, it is smooth and the cuspid rise is still performing its function. On this side, we go into excursions and we still have a smooth, if anything, it's, it's slightly smoother here. And this would be because the cuspid is brought into a more intimate contact with its uh, upper cuspid on the, against the lower. So upon checking this in centric relation, we find that no further adjustment is necessary on this particular mounting. Your mounting may be slightly different and it may require an additional adjustment. What one can check for the clearance on balancing with is to use the shim stock or to use wax. One should not have a maceration or tearing of the wax, but just have a slight perforation of the wax in the centric position. Now this will complete the adjustment of the cast in both centric relation and in the lateral excursions. We will then have to check the protrusive and do any adjustment in protrusive that we find necessary. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.